Hi, I'm Murray Sheridan, and in this video, I want to go through an entire mix of a track that came out in 1989 called Matchbook, which is a song by Ian Moss, who was the guitarist of the Australian band Cold Chisel. Uh, in this cover, recorded and mixed here in my studio with the incredible Mark DaCosta on vocals, Chris Camzellis on guitars, and Dario Bortolin on bass. Uh, so the reason I wanted to record this song is growing up I would always hear my dad uh, just play the album and it was just such a great bunch of songs played by great players and I wanted to see if I could try and recreate some of that magic that amazed me when I was a kid and also it was really fun doing this as well. So first of all I'll play the whole song from start to finish so you can hear the final mix and then I'll go through every track and show you the processing that I've done. So let's have a listen to the final mix.
Yeah, what a cool song. I've always loved that song, and as you can hear, it just has a wicked solo at the end that just goes on for quite a while. In the original, it actually faded out. I just kept ours going because Chris is a cool guitarist and I wanted to hear his solo. So um, as you can see, it's a very simple session. It's got bass, drums, two guitars, a solo, simple keys, an organ, one vocal, and a tambourine. Don't forget the tambourine. So uh, as usual, I'll go through the drums first. So here is the overhead. I'll mute the drum reverb and drum parallel while we go through these. So for the overheads, I just wanted to clean them up a little bit, sucking out a bit of the mid-range at 500, minus 6.5, 2.5 dB at 10.5 K, 1.5 to 1 compression. So just mostly cleaning it up, not doing much in the overheads. As uh, so the room mic, we have a lot of bottom end, 9 dB at 50 Hz. Sucking out a bit of the mids again, just like the overheads. Uh, 2.3 dB at 1.5K, just to get a bit of bite out of that mid range in the rooms. And tie 1 dB of top end on there. And I have no compression on the rooms that's done afterwards with the 1176. So I'll play the rooms uh, dry first. So it's just controlling their dynamics and getting rid of that gross honkiness in the room. So, but let me put on the drum reverb now and that's when the room mics will sound awesome. So originally Chris Lord mixed this song. He also engineered and produced this album too. Uh, so I thought, why not use the new CLA Epic and I'll get all his reverbs. So I've got all four reverbs going and I've also got this one, the crowd going as well, which is the Earth Major Space Station, which gives it a bit of a slap. Uh, just quite a roomy sound as well added in there. So um, I've got the rooms going to the reverb, the toms going to the reverb, the snare sample and the kick room sample. So uh, let me go up to the top now. So here's the kick, which is just a sample. So just adding a bit of punch with the compression at two to one, a uh, little bit of top end, just to get a bit of clarity and that's it. Very simple. It's already a good sounding sample. So for this song, I also wanted a kick room sample because in the original I had quite big roomy drums and I wanted to recreate that. So here's the kick sample. I don't have anything on it. Uh, I've just got the reverb on it. So here it is without the reverb. So just making it fit in with that big roomy drum sound. Below that we have the snare top. So adding tiniest bit of compression at 1.5 to 1, uh, 10 dB of 8K, 2 dB of 3K, just to give it some bite attack clarity. Uh, below that we have a snare sample, which is going to the reverb. I'll turn the reverb off again. So all I'm doing to the snare sample is adding 1.5 to 1 compression on that just to make it push through a little bit more and here it is with the reverb So that reverb's making it sound pretty massive 
Below that we have the snare bottom. So putting all the tops and all the bottoms in, basically another way of scooping it again. So 4 dB of compression on that too. Uh, the hi-hats is next. Obviously there's a volume jump because I've got the input right down. Uh, so I've got 2 to 1 compression on that and uh, 3 dB of 8K just to give a little bit of clarity on that. And I don't normally have a ride symbol but for this song I did want it because I was playing the ride symbol all throughout that outro and I wanted a little bit of clarity on that. So here's the ride. So on the ride just sucking out a bit of mid-range because um, I don't want that honkiness coming out of the ride. And I've got a bell curve at 8k at 4dB just to give the bell and the ride a bit of clarity over that side. Let it poke through a bit and 1.5 to 1 compression on that. So here's the toms without the reverb. They don't sound quite as exciting. So on the toms I've sucked out all the mids, added almost 4dB at 120 and no top end because I think I already had quite a bit of top end on my console on the way in and 2 to 1 compression. Uh, so here they are with nothing on them. So now they just sound more 80s and hi-fi and are going to cut through the mix a lot more now too. So that's the whole drum kit track by track. Let me play the whole drum kit now and I'll play the drum kit dry and then turn on the reverb and the parallel compression. So that CLA verb is making it sound awesome. He's got really good reverbs there. They're all classic 80s reverbs and there's five of them going. So it sounds pretty epic. Uh, so below that, I've got a drum parallel, which is the Neve 33609 at two to one compression ratio. Uh, I try to get it so it's about minus eight dB of gain reduction and uh, it's on the fastest release as well. So, but I don't have it very loud because nothing else has parallel compression. So if it's too loud, the drums are way more forward in the mix than everything else. So here's with and without the drum parallel. So it's not adding much. It's just a tiny bit of pushing forwardness, if that's a thing. Alright, so below that we have the tambourine. So on the tambourine I've got 1.5 dB at 3.5k. It's the tiniest bit of clarity there pushing through. And 2 to 1 compression on that. And it's also going to the drum reverb. So here it is dry. So the cool thing about this tambourine, when you listen to it like that, it just sounds like a normal tambourine part, but when, you, but when you play it with the drums, those hits are actually on the offbeat of the drums and makes a really cool groove. It's quite interesting because you don't really hear that in songs. Uh, so below that we have the bass. Uh, so I didn't do much to the bass because Dario already has great bass sounds. I've added a shelf at 1.5k, just add a bit of uh, mid-range clarity up the top there at 4dB. Uh, there's no compression in this, but afterwards I have the 1176. Uh, so let's have a listen to it dry and then I'll put it in. 
So that's just pushing it forward and you can hear all the little ghost notes and the lower notes. It brings the lower notes up now and obviously I don't want to change the whole tone of his bass because most players have their sound and they don't want you to mess with it too much. So below that we have guitar and once again I haven't messed with it too much again. So uh, I've got uh, 1.3 dB at 1K adding, I just needed like a tiny bit of bite there um, and I took out a little bit of bottom end on a shelf and I've also got the high pass filtering at around 100 just to get rid of that rumble that uh, I didn't need in this song. So I'll play the guitar by itself and then you can hear it with the stuff. So I've also got the LA3 going as well. It's only getting about minus three to four dB uh, gain reduction there. So it's just holding it in place so it just sits nice and flat with everything else. And the guitar is also being sent to the vocal reverb, the H3000 for a sort of chorusy widening effect and also being sent to the Ursa Major Space Station which I'll show you in a little bit. So here's with the effects on. Sounds a bit more open and roomy now and just with the effects it sits in with the big roomy drums now as well in terms of putting it in, in the same environment. Uh, so below that we have the solo and that is just the exact same settings as the guitar above. So the SSL and the LA3 and it's also going to those effects but plus the delay which is a stereo eighth note delay and also going to the slap delay. So let's have a listen to the solo dry and then I'll put everything back in. Now it sounds like a full-on rockin' stadium guitar solo. And below that we have some keys, which is uh, two organs, a pad which is sort of just doing those swells into the verse, and then a keys which sort of just clunks along the chords in the verse. So uh, I don't have much going on in them. The organ, all I've done is taken out uh, 200 hertz on both of them, exactly the same. Uh, and the pad I've rolled off up to 300 hertz on the pad. And on the keys, same deal, but I've added uh, a bit of top end on the keys just to give a bit of clarity so they cut through. And also 1.5 to one compression just so they push through a little bit harder. And the pad's going to the vocal reverb, the H3000, and the keyboard is also going to the H3000. So I'll play those. So you can hear when it puts in, it just, that keys really pops out a little bit harder. Uh, so below that we have the one vocal track, which is very rare in music these days to have one vocal track. Um, and Mark did a really great job singing on this. Uh, so let me play the chorus. The king is on the radio, singing don't be cruel. Girls down on the corner making money after school. So I can't remember what microphone I used to record this, but I definitely had a little bit of compression on the way in as you can hear. And so uh, for the SSL, 
I've got uh, 3dB at 10k, adding a bit of air in his voice. I've taken off 70 hertz down the bottom to get rid of the rumble, uh, and also a bit of a shelf at 60 at minus 3. And uh, I've added uh, 1.5 to 1 compression on his vocal in the SSL going into the 1176, the blue strap, which Chris Lord uses as well. It's even his model. So let's have a listen to that now. And then after that, I've got the uh, DBX902 DS that is taking out of those annoying sibilances. The king is on the radio, singing don't be cruel. Girls down on the corner making money at the school. So all that, that little change just really making his voice sit right up the front of the speakers and give it a nice sort of aggression and grit too, which you get from the blue stripe. And then the vocals are going to the vocal reverb, the H3000, the stereo eighth note delays, uh, the slap, and the Ursa Major. So let me put on all the effects. The king is on the radio, singing don't be cruel. Girls down on the corner making money at the school. Yeah, that sounds nice. So below that, uh, I'll go through all the effects now. So we have the vocal reverb, which is the Alexicon 480L, set at two seconds with 170 millisecond pre-delay. And that pre-delay uh, is almost a 16th note. I like to do that. So it sort of almost gives the reverb a bit, a bit of a slap to it as well. And it also means that the reverb isn't happening straight away. So you're giving time for the dry vocal to sort of cut through the mix before the reverb happens directly afterwards. And I've also got uh, EQ afterwards, which is taking out a bit of the tops and the bottoms, just so um, it doesn't have that rumble. And also because I'm adding some tops on the lead vocal, then that's going to come through the reverb. So it's just sort of counter balancing that top end. And the vocal reverb is also going to the H3000, which is here, which is four cents down and four cents up. So let me do an exaggerated H3000 to show you. The king is on the radio, singing don't be cruel. Girls down on the corner making money at the school. It's got such a unique sound. It's just, it's that sound. And it just makes the vocals sound creamy. It just really widens them. And obviously I don't have that much put in, but um, if you have the right amount, it just really makes the vocals sound smooth and gives it a bit of a spread as well. So above that, we have the slap delay, which is set to roughly a 16th note at 174 milliseconds. And I've got that same EQ on the slap as well. So taking off a bit of the tops and a little bit of the bottoms too. So if we go down, I have the Ursa Major Space Station, which I used on this song because Chris Lord uses it. And uh, this plugin just came out not too long ago, actually, which is really cool because um, yeah, a lot of people would like this. So I've got it set on uh, room number four. So I'll do an exaggeration of this as well to show you. The king is on the radio, singing don't be cruel. Cool. Girls down on the corner making money at the school. So the Ursa is really cool because it's almost like a slap slash gated reverb sort of thing. So it really puts it in this kind of small room environment, but a bit slappy as well. So it's quite a cool sound. And then below that, we have the uh, stereo eighth delay, which is two Lexicon PCM42s, and they're just slightly offset by about 15 milliseconds. So the left one is at 341 milliseconds, the right one is at 356 milliseconds. So if I do an exaggerated thing of that. The king is on the radio, singing don't be cool. Don't be cool. Girls down on the corner making money at the school. You hear them? So uh, yeah, it just gives it a bit of a, it's almost like a slap between the delays and makes the sound a bit wider too. 
All right, so let me give you an example of the um, quarter note delay. So I've got it automated in those sections at the end of each verse to let that one sort of word ring over. So here it is. So as you can see, I've just automated the, those little moments in the track. It's quite easy, really. And then uh, those, all those delays are going to the vocal reverb and the H3000. So all that's left is the master fader, which is, uh, since Chris Lord Algae mixed it, I put on the Focusrite Red 3 emulation by Slate Audio. And I've even got it on the preset called CLA Rock. And uh, it's a sort of medium to fast attack, auto release, set at uh, 1.5 to 1 ratio. And I'll play the mix with that so you can hear what that's doing. So there's not that much compression going on, it's only like, you know, minus one to minus three. And uh, as you can hear, it kind of really pushes the song out, gives it a bit of width as well, it really holds it together quite nicely for not that much compression too. And then afterwards, um, Chris Lord style again, I've got the pull tech at uh, three and a half dB at 60 hertz and two dB at 3K on the widest bandwidth. I'll play you before and after with that. So the pool tech just has that pool tech sound. It's just that nice, thick, warm bottom end that only a pool tech does. It's awesome. So that's it. That's the whole song, it's very simple. It's nothing much there, but uh, if you've got some good players, it turns out pretty good. So uh, once again, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and uh, let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, and uh, if you've got any requests for future songs or mixes or ideas, let me know, and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for watching, bye.